Welcome back, everybody, to Fresh Outlook. I'm your host, Logan Crawford. Super Sunday is almost here, and sure, people are going to be watching what's happening out on the field, but just as many will be interested on what is taking place on the screen in their living room. Those commercials during the Super Bowl are as much a part of the spectacle as the halftime show and the football game itself. Let's say hello to my guests. Jackie Guzda, Jose Lopez, physics professor at Seton Hall University, and John Paul Gonzalez, a former NCAA star and motivational speaker, and joining us live via our DC con uh, connection is Mitch Dow, founder of Creative, is the founder and uh, creative director of Branding Experiences. Wow, that wasn't easy for me to say. <laughs> Let's talk to you first, Mitch, um, since branding is your thing. A lot of money is going to be spent on Sunday for a lot of people to craft their brands and their images in those 30 second spots. Tell me about how important it is for businesses. It's very important and uh, one of the things that we tend to focus on uh, during these conversations every year is the, the ad uh, cost versus the time uh, run time of the ad a 30 second or 45 second ad and there's so much value to the ad buy uh, well beyond that uh, that begins from a week out to when the ad hints are dropped and the uh, the, the sneak peeks are published on through the game, the instant feedback through social media, as well as the water cooler talk the morning after. So if you're focusing primarily just on the runtime of the ad, you're, you're missing the whole value of the ad buy. So it, it's, a, it's an incredibly awesome opportunity for mainstream advertisers to, to really make a splash. John Paul, I'm going to turn to you and say, I actually think the it's not as exciting as it used to be the commercials i used to really look forward to it but i don't see a standout commercial in the last couple of years that people are talking about i think everybody's up their game so much that it's hard to really stand out in this pack tell me what your thoughts are i would say i, I definitely agree with you uh, when it comes to the excitement factor i would say in working with different corporations and doing motivational speaking um i'd say I'm, i am encouraged by the fact of the companies that really take a stand on creating a social awareness or social responsibility with their commercials instead of it just producing a new product or trying to show off a, a shiny new get you know gizmo, gizmo if you right. will uh you know really taking a stance to speak a message that can apply to the world if right. it will be whether it's about you know drunk driving or taking a stance on you know humanitarian issues i'm really encouraged when those big corporations really tend to you already know what we're going to sell you already know hey you already know our beer but let's tell about how this is also an important factor to us. And I love actually seeing those type of commercials. Now, Jose, I know you're a TV-aholic like me. You watch a lot of <laughs> right. TV. I think we're the same generation. You grew up just like right. mesmerized by it. Is there a TV commercial from the Super Bowl that stands out over the years? I think, I mean, I like the Bud Bowls. I, yeah. I really, I thought those really defined what Budweiser and Bud Light was about. That kind of separated. I used to look forward to as a kid growing up to, to those. But I think, I mean, one of the commercials that I think stood out was the Apple in 1984 when it kind of throwing that hammer. And like, I, I remember thinking I was about eight at the time. I was like, what is that about? Well, I have no clue. And that commercial still sticks in my mind to this day. Some you know? become really iconic. I remember yeah. uh, the guy walking through the hall of the football stadium. He gives a kid a Coke. Yes. That was a mean Al one. Green. It was a mean Al Green. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a lot of them really um, stick in our, our memories, and some actually create a man, brand. Like GoDaddy yeah. put yeah. itself on the map because of its really like too hot to air commercials, right? Yeah, yeah. See, what we have to understand is that these commercials are not about the product. Mm. They're about us, mm -hmm. how it fulfills mm -hmm. our needs. So when you said that you liked those kinds of commercials, I immediately knew you were a nice guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Because it, it, it fulfills our needs. The one that I love most is the one about that handsome farmer who raises the Clydesdale. Mm -hmm. And then the yes. Clydesdale goes off and does his job and the handsome farmer comes back and he sees them and he doesn't go and interrupt him because now the Clydesdale is an adult and he's doing his job. Mm -hmm but the horse breaks free and runs to his daddy. I right. cry. <laughs> <laughs> when you're crying at commercials, you know that a marketing company has done its job. Let's turn to Mitch. Mitch, are there any commercials that we should be on the lookout this Super Bowl uh, Sunday? Well, I think Budweiser is uh, a repeat advertiser that comes back year after year and kind of wows us. They're, they appeal to so many different age groups and, and demographics that you often have advertisers like them who will 
put out one ad in the first half that's more edgy and youthful to a, to a younger thir you know, 20 or 30 something demographic. And then they'll come back in the second half with the Clydesdales and the Dalmatian on the, the, the stagecoach next to the driver to appeal to that more conservative, more uh, uh, older audience. So it's, it's interesting, it's not always just a one-shot, uh, cast a wide net uh, advertising approach. You've got some advertisers that are going to have multiple spots. And uh, usually it's the, the Budweiser's of the world, the Coca-Cola Pepsi's. And uh, there's no one particular advertiser that I'm, I'm really on the edge of my seat uh, waiting to see what they do. But just a general good crop of, of entertaining and, and uh, ad, ads that really connect this time of year. So you guys mentioned the social issue aspect of it as well. That's, that's, it's a huge stage for that kind of thing. It's interesting, John Paul, part of the marketing is this commercial is too hot to air. You're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of that on social media. Here is the ad that's been banned from the uh, Super Bowl. You see that a lot with politicians. They'll produce a very controversial spot that will never air. Mm -hmm. I think it was the, uh, um, you probably remember this, Jose, the, um, not that you were voting at the time, <laughs> but the daisy spot where the, oh, you watch the nuclear holocaust. Goldwater. It was Goldwater. Gold right. That spot I think <laughs> aired once and we still talk about That's it whatever right. 50 years later. Yeah. So part of this is marketing, putting together TV shows mm. about the ads. I think there was a special on the other night. You can watch the ads before the Super Bowl even airs. Mm -hmm. yep. Talk to me a little bit about that, John Paul, the importance of marketing these commercials beyond just what happens on Sunday. Yeah, I think um, just like our friend was saying it's really about what happens afterwards. So if you can get someone, much like the GoDaddy ads, to go to the site. Because like you said, it w this is banned, but you can see the full ad at the site. Or, you know, follow us on Twitter. So if they can get that type of following that goes way beyond just that time period. You know, I think it's, you know, it's pretty amazing when some of the ads were coming out. I'm not sure if a lot of them will be doing it for the Super Bowl, where you can actually Shazam the ad, and it right. will link you directly to their page or their site, where you could get a free Coke or something of that <laughs> nature, right. where it's like, wow, it's totally taking ads instead of you just watching them. I think, she, like she said, you know, it's, it's experiencing them and it becomes an interactive relationship that you start having with these brands that I would think, you know, works wonders. What I think is interesting is the only reason you really need a television or broadcast television or cable television nowadays is for live sports. Mm -hmm. Almost everything else you can watch mm -hmm. streaming on demand in one sitting. You can watch an entire season, season. Mm -hmm. of Breaking Bad without one commercial thanks to Netflix or Amazon mm -hmm. Prime. The advertisers got you when it comes to live sports because that's the only time you're actually going to be glued to the tube, watching it live, and actually having the commercial breaks that you're forced to sit through. Mm. Yep. And you can't go back and watch it again like you can with some of the other, you know, like Hulu's and such, where, where you can watch it whenever you want. Or, exactly. or the Netflix, those different services. The sports is live, it's happening at that moment, mm. and you have to watch it. If exactly. not, you're not going to know, you know. Yeah, and I think that you're going to find more and more sports programming on broadcast TV for that very reason because a lot of people don't want to watch TV shows with commercials anymore. Yeah. They're basically saying, you know, I'm going to wait a season or two and I'll watch it on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So Netflix and chill has taken on a whole new dimension, <laughs> so to yeah. speak. Yeah. yeah. Well, little by little, we're cutting the cord. I cut the cord. Didn't right. you? I did. Yeah. I did, but I actually had to uh, reinstall it in some houses where people wanted to watch live TV. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. You know, but what I'm saying is that as technology advances, we're all going to be watching whatever we want to watch mm -hmm. on our computer screens, mm -hmm. on our watches, on, on our everything, phones. Every platform. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. Although cable TV still, and what, still and what's makes a lot of money. You, have, like, gotcha. you mentioned the... I think Mitch is joining you in, Mitch. the Mean Joe Green ad from 1979. Um, you know, the, the, the CFOs and the number crunchers from 1979, I, I don't think would have imagined that their, their ad spot would have been archived in an mm -hmm. indefinite platform like YouTube and that we'd be talking about it 35, 36 years later. I think that's part of the, al the value of the ad buy that's, that has to be considered, not just the, the, the 30 second ad run. So you're right, technology is always evolving and advertising is evolving with it. And uh, you know, to, to have a silver bullet spreadsheet uh, formula to plug in, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think is nearly impossible to, to gauge true value of an ad buy like that. Absolutely, Mitch. Thank you so much for your time, John Paul. Jose, Jackie, thank you as well. We'll be back after this. We're going to be talking about the lightning round. A look at the week's top stories in lightning fast fashion. More on that after this. It's okay.